Alright guys, so, good morning. I'm waiting for the crew to get here. Um, I guess I can go take this moment to update you guys on the stolen equipment. So, as you guys know, if you watch the uh, other video, I um, had noticed a bunch of equipment stolen, um, and it was right after, you know, my brother had, um, you know, moved on to another job, and he moved on to a really good job, um, which was great. Like, you know, the, we have a big port here, and he moved on to that, um, and that, you know, that was pretty awesome. Um, so, um, my other crew leader, um, you know, Jay, I had, uh, you know, said, hey, you know, this really sucks. Obviously, I didn't, you know, talk about it that nicely, but I was really mad that a bunch of equipment was gone. Um, and I was just really upset, you know, obviously, clearly, and you guys, uh, you know, I ended up realizing more equipment was stolen, um, you know, when we were in the shop, you know, filming one day. And, you know, that really sucked. You know, we work hard for this stuff. Um, and, it just, and it just really sucked, man. You know, it was just... It's just something that it's just really hard to, to just know that people steal from you. Um, so, anyways, I had let me roll this up because it's so loud out here. So I had, um, you know, I didn't accuse. I asked, you know, and I felt really bad, but I had to ask, you know. I asked my brother, "Hey, did you take the stuff?" And of course, you know that turned into a fight, and you know, of course, it's going to. Um, but you feel bad, but you know, it's like one person's gone, then all this equipment's gone. You feel really bad and you're not accusing anybody, but you're asking. Um, so, um, all the while, you know, somebody else stole it. So you guys know that, um, you know, we went on a cruise, we went, we, um, went on vacation, we came back home, um, you know, and Jay had called out, um, of work that Monday, which was really suspicious. We found out our... He had taken our truck home every single day, was using our gas. He, nobody's allowed to take the truck home. Uh, pulled money out of an ATM machine, um, paid his cell phone bill, all that stuff that was totally unauthorized and did it anyways. Um, and he, uh, <laughs> anyways, long story short, you know, I ended up having to post something on my personal Facebook page, which I never do that. I, I don't do any of that, you know, drama post your personal stuff on Facebook, but I had to do that to get this person to acknowledge me because they wouldn't acknowledge me through Facebook Messenger even though he kept reading the messages. Um, I'm like, dude, you know, I'm missing more stuff. What's going on? Um, you know, why did you use our card for this and that? You know, I found out you took our truck home every single day, you know, while we were gone, all this stuff. I mean, it's just stealing, man. It's stealing. Um, so finally, his family and his brother in particular, who ended up going on you know, our YouTube channel and, and trash talking. I don't know what it was. I didn't care. I just deleted it. But, um, you know, it's just, you know, maybe something's happening with your family member and you should look into that instead of, you know, instead of, you know, doing what you're doing. But so anyways, uh, I'm not trying to bash somebody or, or ruin somebody at all. Uh, here's the thing, though. Um, you know, if people are going to steal from you, there there's a consequence. Um, so open a police report when the stuff was originally stolen um, and all they saw in the all they saw in the video footage was the company truck going in and out of the trailer so they didn't think anything of it um, so I started getting suspicious because um, he had taken we had um, the FC 91 edger and then I had an old set of steel hedge trimmers he took the I noticed it sitting on the bench um, you know that weekend that he basically quit when we came home um, and I noticed that the, sorry, this is dark. Um, I noticed that the engine for the FC 91 was gone and the steel hedge trimmers, um, were gone. So he took the, and he left the old engine. He took the good engine off the FC 91 and put it on the old, um, steel hedge trimmers and stole that too. Um, so at least he admitted to that, but said he was just trying to fix things. Um, so I ended up calling the police because my gut was just like, he took everything. So I called the police officer the other day and within 15 minutes of me giving him his name, he found, um, items at a pawn shop. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's stupid. Like that's just stupid. You're a stupid, stupid person. If you're going to steal something from somebody 
and then pawn it locally. You know what I'm saying? Like r right away. I mean, you're stupid, bro. Like you're stupid. So anyways, um, went up there. I already had the serial numbers. They identified the serial numbers um, and all that good stuff. And you know, the pawn shop's holding the crap. The horrible thing is we have to buy it back. We have to, we have to pay for that back. I know there's a process you can go through. You can, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Benson, um, was a pawnbroker and said that you can file a, a, a corp, hadius corpius or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you can file something, um, something 99, where you go, the judge, you know, 99% of the time, you know, they'll say you don't owe anything and they'll, they'll make the pawn shop give us the stuff back. But that can take months and all that stuff. I really want the equipment back. So... Um, we're going to probably buy it back, um, which just just blows my mind that our stuff was stolen. We have to buy it back, you know. Um, so we're going to buy it back. But anyways, um, I'm not sure if he's been arrested yet, but it's three felony counts, man. Um, grand theft. In the state of Florida, anything over $300 is grand theft. And I, this is about $1,600, $1,700 worth of stuff um, just that he pawned. The other stuff he still has, I'm sure. Um, so, and then it's, um, um, false ownership, you know, to like a pawnbroker, um, and it's possession of stolen equipment. So we're prosecuting and oh, well, you know, uh, but the, the most disheartening thing is somebody I've known for a very long time, was good friends with him for a very long time, trusted him. I mean, trusted him like family. Um, and then he sat there and just let my own brother take the fall for stealing stuff that he stole. And that's really bad. I mean, that's you're you're just a real shitty human being at that point. I mean, you are. Cover your ears, kids. You're a shitty human being at that point. So, anyways, that's the update on that. And it's not made my day bad. Like I'm 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 actually so happy when we pulled up there. I was so happy that that stuff because they have to hold it for 30 days before they put it on the floor. And I'm so glad that that's a rule and that the pawn shops do their due diligence, fingerprints. They got fingerprint scans. You know, ID all that stuff to prove. Um, stuff. So it, it's just that part's good. So look for the brighter stuff. You know what I'm saying? Look for the happy stuff. Uh, but today is really cool because we get to use the Gravely Atlas today. Um, I did have surgery. If you know some of you guys follow us on Instagram, <laughs> I had a reverse vasectomy. Lee and I are going to have a baby, and um, it's it's not fun. This this is, we're on day five, man, and like it's it's not fun. You know what I'm saying, guys? You know what it's like when you get kicked right between the legs? Oh, that's what it feels like every single day. That tension all up in your gut and your belly. Oh, man. I can't wait for that to go away. So, at least I'm going to try and have some fun with it. i um, got this guy, Mike, um, that's been helping throw the straw down. We're going to go place drop the rest of the straw. There's like 100 bells left. Um, we're going to place drop that all over the property, uh, make it easy so he's not will barreling it, it and carrying it. Stuff that we would use this Atlas for. So Gravely was awesome enough to let us hold on to this thing for a little bit. So we're going to go check this thing out um, and, and start to see if there is a real practicality to using it. Especially for us, like not for everybody, but on commercial properties or people that do a lot of landscaping. Even if you do um, just homes and you do tons of landscaping like on, on big scales or whatever. Um, but I want to see what the practicality practicality is when it comes to you know using this thing so we're gonna some of the guys are pulling up we're gonna get in here we're gonna load the trailer and we're gonna head to the condo and start dropping this stuff yeah <laughs> Okay guys, so this is a Gravely Atlas and this is the uh, JSV 3000. And the 3000 version is basically just a three seater. The 6000 version is the six seater. Um, I would love to have a 6000 version, but we're gonna see how this works out and um, you know, possibly consider the 3000 over the 6000. So I don't know who that is. Um, anyways, this thing is pretty impressive, okay? It's, um, this, this has a 2,000 pound dump capacity, and that's just ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. Um, so 
Things I would do if I owned this. First thing I would do is build some walls around this thing. Um, to be able to, like if I'm putting a bunch of three gallons in here, 35 gallons or something like that, that way there's some more support. Um, you know, so nothing like falls over it. Um, I would definitely put some green touch racks on here to hold some equipment. Um, you know, things like that. There's all kinds of stuff I would do. Um, this thing is an all wheel drive. It's got a four high. It's got a four low. It's got, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's got basically like a limited slip um, rear end. It's also got a, an option for the rear end to um, have a locker. Um, so it's got a locker on it. Um, this thing is pretty, this thing's pretty dope, man. Obviously, I could see putting a winch on the front of that. Um, it, it's just pretty sick. It's pretty sick. I would definitely see about making it street legal. Um, you know, I'm sure that there's a way to do that. If you can make a golf cart street legal, you can make this street legal. Yeah, Gravely sent us this. Um, we are, you know, a Gravely ambassador. We don't own any Gravely equipment. And, and I've seen the question go around, well, how can you be an ambassador? Here's the whole thing is we know how to run equipment. We know what works for us. We know what we like, what we don't like. Um, we get the opportunity to try out equipment um, that hasn't been put out yet or has been put out yet um, and still give our opinion on that equipment, whether we actually own it or not. So we get to demo the equipment and check it out. Um, and then we have the option to buy it if we want to buy it. So this Gravely Atlas right here, and I hope this is working out. I'm trying this really cool wide angle lens on the front of this camera and I hope it comes out good. Um, but anyways, you know, something like this, you know, Lee and I, you know, you guys saw at GIE. I mean, she drove that thing like a freaking maniac, dude. Like she was like on Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome movie set with this thing. I mean, she drove it crazier than I or I think anybody else I saw did. But anyway, what I'm saying is, is we really like this thing and we could see keeping this as basically a work vehicle slash golf cart kind of thing, except a golf cart on massive steroids, you know? Um, but we do do a lot of landscaping, do do. <laughs> oh God, you don't laugh at yourself, you know, somebody else will. Um, but we do, we do use, we do do a lot. Oh my God, I did it again. Um, we do a lot of landscaping. So on these large commercial properties where we are, um, you know, having to travel, you know, acres and acres on one property to drop off plants, to drop off mulch. Um, this side, we're, do we're doing 600 um, bales of straw. Um, the guys have been carrying it around by hand. Um, the last little bit, um, the Atlas is here. So we're going to load this up in the back and we're going to go drop spot it, um, which is, you know, several hundred feet away. Um, and you know, the thing is, is when you're doing this all day long, um, tools become vital, man. They become so vital to have the right tools. Um, and you can have the not right tools and still do the job. Okay, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is if you get to a point to where you can afford to have even better tools to make the job now easier instead of doing what you gotta do and just get the job done. But when you get to a point to where you can start to acquire bigger tools to make the job smaller, um, that, that to me is just definitely efficiency. That's the definition of, effic of efficiency for me. I can't talk today, man. I can't talk today. Um, I can't. All right. So that's just efficiency. And, and I'm really big on efficiency. So to, to be able to have a, um, oh, I, I feel, I feel all exposed because I have a button. I have a button is not buttoned up. I feel so exposed. Um, but when you have efficiency on massive properties, um, there's just nothing, there's nothing better, man. So, um, I definitely want to put this to the test. Um, we can, we'd be able to drop, I uh, think a cubic yard of mulch on the back of this thing. Um, you know, and it, it has a dump. Let me see this. I think the key has to be, all right. So, all right. So that, okay. So that lets you know that the dump is already down. So check this out. That's pretty sick, man. That's pretty dope. Um, so you're able to dump 2000 pounds of, as a, you know, you have a payload of 2000 pounds. Um, it can tow, you know, pretty much the same thing. This is such a versatile machine. Um, I see why people have them. So we're going to tow some stuff around today, drop spot it, kind of see how quick it is, see, see how it works out. 
Imagine doing big landscape jobs. I wish I had this on the other one that we're finishing up. Having a stretch, you know, 1,500 feet of, you know, wheelbarrowing, you know, um, you know, hundreds of plants and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to see how this works out, man. Um, I think this is going to be, I think this is, I think this is going to be really awesome. So let me show you guys around this thing. Um, you have to have your foot on um, in order to start it. You have you have your, your park, you have reverse, neutral, you have low and high. You do not have to be engaged in four wheel drive to have it in low or high. It's just basically kind of like a, almost a tow mode. If you're towing something, um, you have that low option um, and then you have high if you're just opening up. This, this thing does like 35 miles an hour. Um, that's where you're, that's where your uh, your bucket lift goes. This is where you can have basically your two-wheel drive limited slip right there. Um, you can put it in the middle, which locks the rear end, so it's a locker, and then you have it in four-wheel drive up here. Um, and then obviously you have your headlights, you know, low beam, and your brights. Um, and then you have some outlets, you know, to charge stuff. You have a glove box. You have a dashboard. Um, yeah, you have all that stuff. This is where you add gas. Pretty nasty tires. Um, oh, on the tires that they put on this thing. Okay, so me and um, me and the girls, you know, Brennan and Brooke, we uh, we ripped through our backyard. <laughs> we tore up through the backyard um, because you know the thing's not tagged, so we weren't gonna. We drove around the neighborhood, but I don't want to drive around the neighborhood and get in trouble. But um, we ripped through our backyard with this thing, man. And, and the tires on this are awesome. They didn't tear anything up. Um, so I was really excited to see that to be able to drive over all this turf um, and everything and, and not you know and be worried that it would get torn up um, you know that's a big concern so it was awesome that we um, we kind of dukes a hazard um, style if you will in the backyard kind of not really but yeah um, and I just didn't see any turf torn up so that was nice that's a that's a good relief you know you don't want to drive on any client's property and tear up the turf so that's that. All right, so we got this guy Mike coming. I forgot his um, I forgot his his safety vest because I'm smart today. Uh, but anyways, um, he's been helping David throw down the the, the straw. Um, I got David out with the guys. Um, you know, we just have to tackle one of the big properties. I want as many people there as possible. So Mike should be here any minute, and um, you know, I said it twice. We're gonna go drop some straw. Yeah, I can't really pick stuff up. So, cause you know, like I said, I had um, a reverse vasectomy. Oh my God. So anyways, I can't really pick stuff up. I've been trying and I've been doing it against Leah's better judgment and advice. And um, it, it put me down pretty, it put me down, man. I ain't gonna lie. That, that junk messed me up. That messed me up, man. That messed me up. So anyways, um, I'm gonna have him load it. I might help him anyway, because I'm stubborn. Um, and we'll go drop it. So we've got, I don't know, how many bells do we have in here? Let me see. So we have like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 40, probably like, I don't know, 15. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, probably 16 to 18 bells of straw that we got in there. Um, so I'm sure we can fit a lot more. I mean, you can strap stuff down if you're going super long distances, all that stuff, you know, so yeah. All right, so we're gonna go pick up Mike. Mike's here! He's like, what the heck, man? Come on, Mike, let's do it, buddy. This is Mike, guys. So bad. He's like, what the heck's going on? All right, so we're gonna go drop spot this stuff. You know where we need to go? 
we need to go on the outside first? Um, All the buildings and everything in here are done, right? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna, so how many, what all piles are there? There's here, there's there. And there's another one? All right, let's go. Let's go see. Ah, I gotta sit easy, man. I gotta sit easy. The jewels are hurting today, Mike. The jewels are hurting. It went good, man. I just, um, it's just kind of hard. That one right there, it's just hard to move around a little bit. So, is there another one? Yeah, or is that I mean, it? there might be one right up here to the left. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take, uh, let's go out here. I don't know if I can fit. Um, all right, so we're going to try this test where we go on the sidewalks. So far, so good. I don't know if we can get through that opening down there. Let's go see if we can get through that opening. No, nothing's falling back there. All right. It's a little tight squeeze, but I think we can get in here. All right. We got straw down? Huh? We got everything? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop straw. We're going to drop this stuff all down here along this long hedge. Um, we're just gonna stroll just up underneath it. So we'll, um, yeah, Mike, you wanna jump out and just start grabbing bales? I'm not supposed to be picking anything up, but I did anyway. Yeah, so this would definitely and especially come in handy like if you're by yourself and you're going to drop all this stuff um, honestly if I were oh my gosh sorry guys <laughs> I have to adjust I have to readjust a lot um, but if I were by if, um, if I were feeling up to it um, I would probably just be doing this um, by myself or uh, probably just have help to finish it up or whatever but if you're doing it by yourself I mean this I could already see this would be awesome um, you know, you pull forward, grab a couple, walk back, grab a keep, pull forward. Um, and yeah, it, it can be the same. It's the same concept as a wheelbarrow, but the whole point is you can go much faster. You're not having to walk back and forth, wear yourself out extra for the day. And you can fit, I mean, you know, four or five times the amount in one load um, is doing it with a wheelbarrow. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's this, let's just call it this. It's this, it can... It's just the spoils of the work job. We can do we can do everything manually by hand. We can, you know, oh, stop being a baby, walk it all day. I mean, dude, we don't play that. Like, I don't. I'm all about, you know, what makes the job as easy as possible without it just being overly ridiculous. And I can tell you that working on 30 acre, 20 acre, 35 acre properties and having to walk the entire place just to drop straw you know what i'm saying or to drop mulch that's exhausting dude it's more exhausting doing that than it is putting down the actual product so being able to do something like this um i don't think is ridiculous at all so let's go do some yeehaw
There comes to a point to where we end up wanting to buy this. I think we're going to end up probably getting another trailer just to tow it around. So, um, you know, it fits well. It's, it's got clearance. We have six and a half feet, so that's not it. That's not an issue. Um, I could definitely fit the 6,000 in here from front to back. I'd have enough room. Um, but I took the racks off the walls. Um, that way we have room for it. And you can see we're about, uh, you know, about eight inches off the wall on both sides. Let you see what it's like from, from this side. So, sorry about that. All right, so first of all, I know I should have my seatbelt on, but just wearing a seatbelt um, is kind of uncomfortable and painful right now. Yes, I know it would be more painful if, God forbid, I got in a car accident, but I'm taking my chances right now. My, my initial thoughts on this um, Gravely Atlas. What I have to be careful of is separating fun toy from work equipment. But I don't want to because it's like both. But if you're going to buy it for your business, then you have to separate it. So let's talk about how fun it is. It's really fun. Scale of 1 to 10, it's 10. That thing is so fun to drive, it's awesome. Let's talk about what's really important and that's the work aspect of it. So I just moved 87 bales of straw in less than an hour, moved them around, dropped them off all over the place, farting around, videotaping. Um, less than an hour we moved all that. Um, and that's just not gonna happen whenever you're doing it with wheelbarrows. So it was just, um, it was just incredibly, incredibly quick. The size of the bed on this is impressive. Um, you know, like I said, you could fit the long, the long side of a straw, a bale of straw, you can fit them side by side, two of them. Um, so that's, that's pretty awesome. And you, you know, you can stack however many you want. I did three rows, you know, of eight. So we got 24, a couple times I threw a couple extra 26 bales on there. Um, no big deal. Um, I'm not talking about the weight. That thing holds a ton. So just as far as, you know, being able to move a massive amount of uh, material at one time, um, I was really impressed with it. So having said that, this is the first day with it. Um, and your initial thoughts are usually optimistic if you like something. Um, so my initial thoughts on this are, are, I wish that we owned it already. I think it's awesome. Um, I could see, you know, you, you can project what you're able to do with things. I can project so much work getting done so much faster with this. It's just, I know it's a self-explanatory. You're like, duh, you idiot. Of course. But it's different to see it and think about it. And it's, and it's one thing to have it in your hand and to be using it. You know what I mean? So this, is, this thing's pretty incredible. I love how fast it is. Um, so when I'm ready to jump back and grab some materials, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Um, the price tags on these things range anywhere from like 12 to 13, 14,000 for the 3,000 to the 6,000. Um, I've seen some a little less. We spend, you know, that much on a mower easily. The mowers make us money every day. All it takes is one or two landscape jobs that are decent size and it pays for this machine. That is my logic to it. I could do three landscape jobs, you know, small, what I would call a medium, small landscape job, and it would pay for this machine. Um, and it would make the job so much easier. We have to see what it's like in real world use. Tomorrow we're going to drop some mulch. You know, we're gonna take the dump truck. Um, I think what we're gonna do is scoop a bunch of mulch on the back of it. We're gonna back up to the spot that we're mulching, dump it. Um, we're gonna kind of see how that goes tomorrow. I'm gonna keep a, a few, as many of these videos going as we can. Um, and I just really wanna see what all we can do with it. But so far, um, it definitely gets an A for the day. Um, I like it a lot. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's really awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Anyways, that's it for me for the day, guys. I feel like somebody just sumo kicked me right in the stomach and I, I'm done for the day. All right, peace out. We all get a little hell bent from time to time.
five And shovel where the sun don't shine You can take your own advice Put it on your favorite t-shirt Oh, Lord knows You ain't got far to go Just listen to my voice Till I'll tell you where to go Yes, I'm helping my fear wrong I live my days the way I want And I'm helping I've been slow Just leave it down the road Truck. Good luck getting past the 12 gauge buck. Is she gonna reimburse my time? Digging holes for change overnight up the county line. Oh, Lord knows you ain't got far to go. 